Heavenly Father, right now, we thank you in this moment. First, I want to thank you guys for joining with me. Um, I just felt the unction to share this with you guys, and I wanted to spend a few moments praying for you and your marriage as we come into this new season, as we come into this new journey. I especially want to share this prayer with my newlyweds, with my seasoned veterans, people who've been married for a while, or people who are newly coming into their relationship, and even, even, hear me now, to those who are engaged. It is critical that we find a right foundation as we come into this thing called a marriage, this thing called a relationship. So what I'm going to share is one of the founders of this marriage club. I want the opportunity, if you will, to share with you the big 10 that I want us to begin to pray for in this new season for our relationship. I am one of the founders of the marriage club. I am, yes, one of the people who helped to create this. Me and my beautiful wife, Chris Sonny, uh, I'm Mauricio Sonny, if some of you guys don't know, some of you may call me Pastor Sonny, I'm both of those. But foremost right now, my concern is to pray over your marriage. Give me this moment, take these few seconds, play this audio back and, and let this become a part of your core do it every day, do it weekly if you can, so that we begin to saturate and cover our relationship like never before. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Heavenly Father, right now in the name of Jesus, God, we recognize that our relationship represents something great. We recognize, Lord, that we are the Peters of this generation because we are the ones who sustain the earth. Our traditional marriage unapologetically is what causes the earth to bear its fruit. So right now, in the name of Jesus, it is my prayer, Lord, that you would give us the ability to sustain and maintain our relationship and allow us to make a covenant to begin to pray for and saturate our relationship in prayer. Ah, God, thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, right now, the first thing that we want to pray for is prayer. We want to pray that we do not uh, 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 forget the importance of prayer and understand and recognize how critical it is for us to saturate our relationship in prayer, God. Help us to understand not to be anxious about anything, but to pray about everything. God, we understand that prayer reads a, nat a, a, a natural covenant, God. So we ask right now that you continue to press our hearts to pray for our marriage, to press our hearts to pray for our relationship like we've never prayed before. God, to, 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 to spend time in prayer, to spend time covering our relationship because it's critical that our relationship goes to the next level. So I thank you for right now, the knowledge of understanding how important and critical prayer is in our marriage. God, help us to pray for our spouse even when we don't like them. God, yes, I'll be the first to admit that there are seasons in my relationship that I don't care for and can't stand my spouse. And it's probably because of something I've done, Lord. I'll never admit it to them, but Lord, I recognize that there are some times that we don't get along, God, but help me be the bigger person and pray in those seasons, God. The next thing that we need to do, Lord, is pray for patience. God, we thank you that in Romans 12 and 12, it says rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and constant in prayer, God. Help us to understand the, port, the importance of not making a, a, a move too quickly, God. When we become angry, Lord, help us to slow down and not let our temper cause us to do some things that could potentially derail our relationship. Help us to be calm and to learn how to take a few moments and process the things that we're dealing with and understand how important it is to be patient in our relationship, God. So we pray right now for patience. God, we know that that's not something easily that we come by, God, but I'm praying right now that you give us the patience we need to be successful in our marriage for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 for the, for the full length of our relationship. We thank you, God, for patience. The next thing we pray for is communication. Uh, you said it in your word in James 1 and 19. Know this, my beloved brother, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. God, communication is the fuel that keeps the fire in our relationship burning. Without it, our relationship goes cold. 
Help us, Lord, to continue to recognize the importance of communication. Lord, help us to learn how to speak to our spouse. Forgive us, Lord. Oh, God, this is a good one. Forgive us, Lord, for cursing at our spouse. How can we love someone and lay curses on them at the same time? Forgive us for the foul language that we use because we became angry. Let those words not carry seeds in our relationship that derail what you're trying to do, God, but help us to carry the mantle of speaking the right words over our relationship. Help us to recognize and understand the importance and value that our words bring. Yes, Lord, you said that our words carry the burden of life or death. We have to choose how we're going to dictate and motivate our spouse, whether we're going to build them up or tear them down through our communication. You have the innate ability, woman of God, to speak things over your spouse, to speak things over your husband that would make them feel as though they can run through a big brick wall. So I pray right now that the right communication begins to sprout out of our mouths. God, let us become their number one cheerleader. In the name of Jesus, God, help us to recognize the importance of communication, the importance of healthy and good communication. The next thing that we have to do, God, is work on our affection, God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, that you said it in your word in Ephesians 4, 31 through 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander whoo, be put away from you along with all malice, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God Christ forgave us. Mm, thank you, Lord. You said it in his knees, her knees. Affection is a way of life, a canopy that covers and protects a marriage. God, help us to be more affectionate. God, we understand I personally understand as a man that sometimes I'm in balance with that. I'm so caught up in the intimacy portion of my relationship. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. But, but sometimes I need to understand and recognize the importance of affection, the importance of just a loving touch, the importance, God, of, of a, a, a massage that doesn't have any strings attached. Oh, forgive me, wifey. I know that sometimes that I have my own motives in my affectionate ways, but help me, God. God, right now in this moment, to, to recognize the importance of, of affection in my relationship, to recognize just how critical it is that I be affectionate towards my spouse, especially for my wife. God, you said it's like oil and vinegar. <laughs> we are so intimacy driven and they're affection driven. A woman needs affection. A man needs intimacy, God. So help me to recognize, to pause for a moment and not be so critically involved in trying to get the intimacy on that I miss those moments for affection. Thank you, Lord, for balance. Thank you, Lord, for balance right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we segue from that, God, I thank you that we have more sex in our relationship. Yes, God, men are intimately driven. And yes, intimacy is a big and critical part of both a man and woman's life, but men are sexually driven creatures in most instances, God. So right now, God, as you said it in your word in 1 Corinthians 7, 3 through 5, do not deprive one another except perhaps by agreement for a limited time that you may devote yourselves to prayer, but then come back together so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Oh God, you said it so cold right there. It is important that we understand without sex, we sometimes can lose control. Ooh, and we're not making excuses in any way, or shape or form, but we need to understand how critical it is to fulfill the sexual needs of our spouse. Let us not deprive them. The Bible also speaks in that same chapter how the husband belongs to the wife and the wife belongs to the husband. And it is important that we become intimate with each other, that we do not lose self-control. So thank you, God, that we're not going to allow ourselves to be caught in the snares and the traps of the enemy by depriving our spouse from sexual needs. Uh, you said it, and I, I thank you, God, that, that we're understanding, as it says in, 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 in uh, psychology today, that sexuality infuses a man's intimate relationship with potential and excitement. 
the hormonal energy gives him the drive and aggression to pursue his life's purpose and to work and to pursue his partner. Oh, that's so deep. Thank you for that, God. Thank you for the revelation to help us understand how critical that is as it relates to men and not to diminish its criticality towards the women, God, but just to help us understand why the, 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 the husband is so sexually driven, God. Thank you for that. Next thing we're going to pray for is our children and our family. God, you said it in your word in Psalms 127 and 3. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. Thank you for that. And you said in Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way that he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. God, help us to understand how critical and important it is to train our babies up, to pray and bring back the praying grandmothers, the praying mothers. We have to cover and saturate our children and keep them anchored in something because there's so much chaos going on in the world right now. There's so many things out there that are looking to snatch away our children, that are looking to distract and destroy their purpose and to push them into a direction that you never intended for them to go. So right now, in the mighty and miraculous name of Jesus, I pray for covering for our children, for our stepchildren, which I like to call our love children. I pray for mixed relationships right now in the name of Jesus, that the children will honor both the mother and the stepfather or the father and the stepmother and not treat them in a negative or connotative way. And I come against that. Uh, a spirit of dissentment or, or, or just trying to do negative things and trying to be trifling. I pray against it right now. I pray against grown children trying to break up their, uh, their, their moms and fathers. Oh, I come against jealousy and envy. Oh, there are some spirits out there that are lurking, trying to destroy your marriage. You too grown as a, as a child to be trying to destroy your mother or father's relationship. So I pray against it right now. Jesus, God, cover our children and cover our marriage with children. Ooh, come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. The next one is for finances. I said finances, but forget just praying for finances. God, I'm praying for financial strategy. Lord, to be able to deal with the finances that you give me, God, because what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? You said it in Hebrews 13 and 5. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For as he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So right now in this moment, God, we recognize as it is written that money issues are responsible for 22% of divorces, making it the third leading cause according to to the divorce and financial analysis in Forbes. Thank you for that knowledge right now, God. And we're not going to allow that to be the culprit of our relational failure. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we're going to seek out financial strategies, God. Give us books. If we're not big readers, give us audio books. If we're not big listeners, give us videos and different things like that that would help our relationship right now in the name of Jesus. God, bring money into our cupboards. Connect us with the right kind of folks who have financial strategies and independence, who are the lenders and not the borrowers to help us to become just that. Innovative mind, ideals, and, 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 and things that, that, that would help us to streamline our finances and find multiple options for financial gain right now in the name of Jesus. I pray a special blessing over those who are listening to this and, and viewing this right now in the name of Jesus, that you would enlarge their territory. Oh, thank you, God. Ah, thank you, Lord, for that. Right now in the name of Jesus, enlarge their financial territory. <laughs> Give them greater influence, God, but be careful because money magnifies who we are. So God, we ask that you Decrease those things that are not like you, those things that have the potential to derail us so that when we get the money, it doesn't cause us to fail. It doesn't cause us to lose sight of who you are in our lives and lose sight of what we have in our relationship. Thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus. And God, the next thing we're praying for is our future, our vision. God, you said it in Proverbs 21 and 5, the plan of the diligent leads surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. God, if we set no goals, we can make no goals. God, if we're not 
planning a course, then anywhere we go is okay. So we come against meandering and mediocrity, God, right now in the name of Jesus. Help us to begin to make strategic plans as we come into this new season. Help us to create vision boards and ideas and resolutions that we not just create, but follow through with right now in the name of Jesus. God, help us to gain a greater sense of discipline. Thank you, God, that we understand how critical it is that we discipline ourselves to focus on the goals that we create, to go after them, not just singularly, but as a family. God, help us to align our goals and work as a team, as one in our marriage towards the goals we have so that when one comes up, he's not looking down or putting down the other or vice versa. Forgive us, Lord, for shunning our spouse or looking down on them or communicating in a negative fashion because they haven't grown at the same level we grow because when I move, you move. Just like that. And I thank you for it, God, that we recognize that our growth is synonymous to their growth and we grow collectively, even as one grows more than the other, it's because of the support of your spouse that you even had the liberty of growth. So I thank you, God, right now in the name of Jesus, that you're blessing our future and that our plans will be diligent and we're not going to do anything hastily, but we're going to prayer. We're going to use prayer and supplication and fasting to guide us along the way and try to hear from you, God. It is healthy for and important for your marriage to have individual goals. When you grow as a person, your relationship will grow too. Family education. Thank you for that knowledge right now in the name. The next point, and I'm almost done. Stay with me if you will. Number nine is that we grow our faith, Lord. Help us, God, to become more faithful, God. And even, even with the finances stuff, I heard you so clearly right now. God says that if you had more faith, you wouldn't be so worried about your finances. If you had more faith, you wouldn't be so worried about your future. You wouldn't be beating your spouse up about what they're going to do today, how y'all are going to survive, because you recognize that the source of everything that you need comes through your faith, and it's from God. And when your faith is unshakable, then your relationship becomes unshakable. It is synonymous. It is almost the same thing. I have faith in God to cover my relationship what I'm dealing with, no matter what I'm going through. You said in your word in 1 John 5 and 4, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes this world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our University of Texas says positive religious coping increases feelings of calm and hopeless, hopefulness, which may allow you to be more forgiving, optimistic, and altruistic during marital conflict. Come on. So in your times of struggle, in your times of hardships, it is your faith that's going to carry you through. Thank you, God, for an increase and overflow of faith right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And number 10 of our big 10 is and I've been preaching this and I'll say it until I'm blue in the face until I leave this earth. The new kill still and destroy in our relationship the new kill, steal, and destroy in our life is distractions. The devil doesn't have to kill you if he can distract you. The devil doesn't have to destroy you if he can distract you. He doesn't have to steal from you if he has you distracted. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray against distractions. I, you said in your word of Philippians 4 and 8, finally, brother, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, focus on these things. The enemy wants you to focus on the antagonist of all of these things. He wants you to focus on the lies. He wants you to focus on the dishonorable moments. He wants you to focus on the unjust, the unpure, the lack of love, the things that are not commendable, the things that lack excellence. Isn't it crazy how one bad experience has the ability to derail every good thing we've done in a relationship? Ah, help us, God. Help us, God, right now in the name of Jesus to have a more forgiving heart, to not be distracted by stuff. God, let us turn the TV off. God, if I haven't seen my spouse in eight hours, and when they come in the door, they're not the, the main focus of my life. And something's wrong, God. 
Ah, Thank you, Lord. Forgive me if I'm so focused on my TV show, if I'm so focused on my phone conversation that I don't even give any love to my spouse after not seeing them for a full day. Help me against the distractions that are keeping me from becoming the person you desire for me to be in my life. God, I got to learn to turn the TV off. Men, women who are gamers, I've got to learn to stop playing the game every so often. Even cars now are telling you to take them moment. Take a break. Go get some coffee. We've got to learn how to get some downtime. There's so many distractions. There's so many things in the world that want to keep us overburdened that we don't spend enough time in our relationship. Thank you, God. We've got to spend some quality time. No matter what type of situation you're in, no matter where you are in your marriage, you've got to have some quality time. So right now, God, help us to make that a focus point. Help us to understand how critical it is that we make our marriage a priority. Give us that date night, Lord. Give us that quality time. Give us that time of intimacy, God. And as we've gone over these 10 things, God, I pray right now, God, that you would begin to do something amazing in the lives of those who are listening to this, who are viewing this right now. Help them to begin to move like you desire for them to move, to walk in a relationship that you desired for them. Help them not lose faith or lose sight of the fact that you're a healer, you're a restorer. You can fix anything, any broken thing that we experience in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you would just do something amazing and miraculous in our marriages right now in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, have your way. Have your way, Lord. In this moment, God, in our relationships, Lord, have your way. It is in Jesus' name we pray these prayers. In the mighty and miraculous name of Jesus, we pray these prayers. And everyone in agreement, come on, say it with me. Say, it is so. Come on, you got to say it right now. I don't care where you are, where you're driving. If you're listening to this, if you're watching this right now, it is so in my marriage. Everything that I've declared today, everything that I've prayed Things are about to shift in my relationship. I refuse to go into this new season with the old relationship, with the issues that I once experienced. I am walking into a newfound anointing and grace because I am believing you, God, to fix it. It is so. In Jesus' name we pray. I love you. I'm praying for you again. I'm Pastor Sonny one of the founders of the Marriage Club and the senior pastor of the Lifehouse Church right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Listen, I'm praying for you. We love you. My heart goes out to you. If you want a copy of this, be more than willing to, to allow you to have a copy of this. Inbox me or send me some information and I'll tell you how you can get that. And I thank you guys. I promise you, I thank you and I love you guys so much. My heart goes out to you. I want to see your marriage amazing. <laughs> Let's spend some time making marriages great again. Listen, it's Pastor Sonny. I love you. I'm praying for you. You have an awesome, awesome day. And watch God do something amazing in your relationship. God bless you.